Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of UA Eats. I'm UA, and I just landed in St. Louis from Denver, like pretty much just like maybe 30 minutes ago. I'm stopping by St. Louis because I was in Denver for a trip with friends, and on the way home, you know, I figured I might as well stop in St. Louis because while many of you know that I'm based in that New Jersey, New York area, you might not know this, that I actually went to college in St. Louis. So, you know, I looked at the map and I saw Denver all the way out there and I saw St. Louis smack dab in the middle in the middle of Denver and Newark so I figured you know what let's just stop by it's been a while since I've seen my alma mater so I figured you know it's been too long so but of course I can't stop here without eating some great foods and making some vids right so I'm excited to try all the great St. Louis barbecue here and one place that's always been on my list is Sugar Fire Smokehouse now Sugar Fire Smokehouse is like a big local chain here in St. Louis. Obviously for it to have many locations that means the first location must have been good so despite going to college in St. Louis I feel like I I don't know I feel like I never really properly explored the barbecue scene here because when I was in college I didn't have a car. Most of the time I you know just ate on campus or near campus and when I was lucky enough to hang out with people with cars I was kind of at the mercy of whatever they wanted to do you know so it would be whatever they wanted to eat you know Chinese food or fast food or whatnot steak and shake and stuff like that or when we did eat barbecue it was almost always pappies you make all the effort to leave campus and get barbecue people go pappies is the best so every single time we would eat at pappies and I feel like I never really explored the rest of the st. Louis barbecue scene which is quite robust and quite good on its own right it's not just pappies you know so now that I am back in st. Louis I am excited to finally do all the things that I never got to do back in college and you know try the biggest barbecue chain in St. Louis so I'm pretty excited I feel kind of giddy like you know like a kid on Christmas morning finally getting to do something he's wanted to do for a long time so let's check it out reminds me of the pig from Animal Farm for some reason All right, so I have found the menu. It is underneath this uh, big barbecue sign here, but it's kind of tucked away in the corner, like, uh, you know, behind the, uh, I guess, the serving room or serving station there, if you would call it that. On this big menu board, they have a lot of sandwiches, and I hear actually some of these sandwiches are quite nice. I hear great things about this brisket cheesesteak, and believe it or not, I think they actually sell pastrami here, but I don't see it on the menu. Maybe that's not offered anymore. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have been tempted to get it. You know what? We're here for barbecue, so let's try some of these barbecue options, and uh, this is what we're talking about. They got some pretty economic looking combos. Well, okay, I guess 20 bucks isn't as cheap as I feel like it would have been back when I was in college, but hey, honestly, pretty generous. Two meats, two meats and two sides and a fountain drink, not looking bad. Otherwise, you can kind of order the meats on their own at the bottom there, either a half rack or a full rack or sausages and whatnot. And they also have some other smoked meat sandwiches here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure this is all great. Like, I'm sure these burgers are great too, but you know, I'm not here for burgers. I'm here for barbecue. I didn't come all the way to St. Louis for burgers. You know, I can get that back in New York. So this is looking pretty good. Let's do a two meat combo and let's upgrade Five bucks for you guys for, or no, not five bucks, two bucks for you guys for the ribs. So we'll do a rib, cause in St. Louis you gotta get some ribs. Otherwise you haven't had barbecue. And then let's try the brisket, why don't we? And you know, unfortunately it looks like their side selection is not the largest. You know, I was hoping for mac and cheese. I was hoping for, uh, you know, some other options, but you know what? Let's try two sides. Maybe let's do, uh, hmm. You know what, let's do coleslaw, you know, make things a little bit more healthy. And then let me think, either potato salad or house fries. Let's do fries. Let's order, I'm getting kind of excited, but, ooh, I'm guessing these are like barbecue awards. That's pretty cool. Before we go, let us apologize to Mr. and Mrs. Piggy. Sorry, we're gonna be eating one of your family members. Just know it's not personal. I'll do a uh, two meat combo uh, for here. I'll do uh, ribs, I'll upgrade to the ribs. And I'll do, a, is that brisket there? Yeah, you can have brisket on it. 
Yes, yeah, so I'll do. I'll do brisket. Right? That looks. That looks great. And uh, for the it, that comes up two sides, right? Oh, uh, okay. So just brisket and rice. Yep. Oh wow! Thank you. Yeah. Well, when you lose half your defensive Yeah, he probably shouldn't have fired the defensive coach, but I feel like that might not have been him. That might have been from the owner. I feel like, yeah. So, all right. Uh, so I get two sides, right? Yep. Uh, you, oh, oh, I didn't know there was mac and cheese. Uh, let me do mac and cheese. And uh, what other sides are recommended? Uh, I probably would go the jalapeno, jalapeno cheddar. Pudding. Oh yes, yes, please. I mean, that one in the middle, right? Oopsies. Oh, uh, thank, thank you, thank you. That one in the middle. That's the jalapeno pudding. Yeah, yeah please. Yes, I'll try that. Excellent. Thank you. Go birds. All right, guys. We got our two meat plate, and I gotta say, it's a pretty generous portion. So I'm definitely pleased with this. I feel like back when I was in school, before all the inflation, this probably would have been a little bit cheaper, but it's still definitely a decent price, I feel like, for all the food we got. And just quickly showing the atmosphere here, it's definitely a nice laid-back atmosphere. It's a chain, but you still feel like you're eating sort of at like a, you know, like a standalone barbecue joint rather than like a fast food or like a fast casual joint. And as you saw when I was ordering, it kind of operates on like a cafeteria, kind of like a tray line sort of system. I love it. I love these non-pretentious places to eat. These are like my favorite atmospheres. Let me show you the food. And does this just not look like a beautiful plate of Q? I mean, some delicious St. Louis ribs. That's some nice, fatty, juicy looking brisket. And I believe brisket is traditionally more Texas, but you know, now, you know, most barbecue joints will offer it regardless of state lines. And then a the mac and cheese, you know, the mac and cheese, uh, you know, might look a little gloopy, but I'm sure it's gonna taste good. You know, looks are sometimes deceiving. And I asked him what was probably the most popular here. And he said this jalapeno bread pudding. So I had to get it. That just looks so unique. All with a big ol' cup of iced orange soda to wash it down. My go-to beverage when I'm not eating healthy. But guys, just check out this these delicious ribs oh my goodness i mean i remember pappy's ribs being amazing like heaven on earth but honestly this is looking pretty good too i feel like i missed out back in college by not trying all these spots people sometimes sneer at chains but oftentimes places become chains for a reason so let's do the ribs first because i can't wait and i'm starving all right the first test at these good barbecue joints oftentimes the ribs will just come apart without the need to cut them oh yeah look Look, I like can't even, you know what? It's gonna fall off the bone if I pull it like that, so. It's just that tender. Like the bone is like pulling tug of war with the, with the soft rib, so let's just, yep, separate it with a knife. Looks like that didn't quite work, but first a bite of the delicious rib, why don't we? Cheers. Man, great to be back in St. Louis, right? Oh my goodness. Hmm. Had to finish the whole rib before I offer an analysis. Let's eat one more, but I'll try to break it down while I'm eating it. I mean, just look at how unbelievably tender these ribs are. Like, I couldn't even pull them apart. Otherwise, the bone would just come right out, and then, you know, I would have boneless rib, which I guess is nice, but I'm not really in the, you know, rib witch business or the McRib business. I'm in the rib business. Just look at that fattiness in the rib as well. Like, every bite just filled with delicious fat. Just basically edible gold, as I call it. Delicious color on the outside. Great spice rub, great color. Like a perfect bark, I guess you might call it, to complement the fatty rib on the inside. These are just smoked to like the perfect doneness level. It's delicious. Oh, can't stop, gotta keep eating. Mmm. Mmm. 
once again, completely cleaned house on this. No bone to pick with this one. I wasn't even eating them with the sauce, but you know, that was slightly intentional. I kind of like to eat things without the sauce first. I think great meat should stand on its own without the need for any additional sauces, but the sauces can amplify good meat for sure. So let's try some of the sugar fire sauce, why don't we? And this is St. Louis Sweet. St. Louis Sweet, just a little sweet. So let's try it on this piece that fell off, why don't we? Oops, got a little bit more than I asked for. With the sauce on top, it kind of resembles like the stereotypical St. Louis style rib that you maybe have seen in media, right? It's good, but I almost prefer it sauceless. Like I feel like, like I feel like this sauce, they said it was just a little bit sweet. I mean, just showing you again, yeah, just to make sure that I understood correctly, just a little sweet. But it's not just a little sweet to me. It is quite sweet, uh, you know, very sweet and syrupy. And uh, to be honest, it kind of reminds me of like Chinese takeout, like orange chicken or like sesame chicken, like that super sweet sauce to go with like the fried chicken. It does kind of remind me of that a little bit. It's good, but I just think that that like sweetness kind of overpowers this delicious rib and distracts from the amazing smoked rib and it doesn't really need it you know it kind of masks and covers up more than it needs to but they got two other sauces here they got honey badger our honey q sauce with some heat and they got texas hot tangy and super spicy so let's try this honey badger one why don't we Teron Matthew, wasn't his name Honey Badger? So we're gonna do it like this. We're gonna do half of this on this rib. You know, I guess like smooth it out a little bit. And then we'll eat the second half with the uh, Texas Heat one. Oh boy. Let's see if this Honey Badger sauce lives up to its reputation of its uh, excellent NFL player. I have a gut feeling that I'm still gonna prefer the uh, naked rib more than the ones with the sauces, but I could be wrong. Uh, anyways, let's just take a bite. Mm. This honey badger one is really, really nice. Like it's got some honey flavor with some heat and it's like balanced well and the heat and the sweetness from the honey, it's like perfect. I'm using a napkin to hold these now because my hands are getting a little bit, uh, you know, my hands are getting a little bit saucy. But this one is like really well balanced. I love the more natural sweetness from the honey as opposed to like an artificial sweetness. And the heat is a good touch as well to balance it out. And the honey also offers like a nice like viscosity, so to say, like a stickiness and like a fluidness that is quite nice. So honestly, this honey badger sauce so far might maybe not amplify, but it definitely turns this into like a different kind of meat and in a good way. So delicious. Mmm. Mad scientist somewhere in that kitchen. I don't know how they invented this sauce. That's just outstanding. For this last rib, we're gonna try it with the Texas Hot. I kept calling it Texas Heat, but it's called Texas Hot. And I don't know, I personally feel like Texas Heat is a little more grammatically correct, but hey, when in Rome, right? So, whoops, missed. Texas Heat, why don't we? Uh, I hope I didn't overdo it, but let's give it a shot, why don't we? All right, last rib, but this one with some Texas Heat. So that barbecue sauce is pretty good, but I think I still prefer this honey badger one the most. I would say the honey badger is the only one that I would probably willingly put on one of these ribs again. I think that the flavor is so good that I'm willing to have it complement this meat rather than have the other ones mask this meat, if that makes sense. But this Texas hot one, it's good. I mean, it kind of tastes more like a standard barbecue sauce that you might be used to. Like it kind of has like that sweet flavor, a little bit of a kick to it. I'm trying to detect what else might be in it. Maybe like a bit of like a molasses-y flavor, a slightly smoky flavor, but it's good. I mean, don't misunderstand me at all. This is an excellent barbecue sauce. Back in New Jersey, back in New York, I would say, oh my goodness. Like if I found a barbecue restaurant that was pretty good and 
and also had the sauce, I would say, you know, just slather the whole thing in this because you come here to eat that sauce, but not here in St. Louis, guys. In St. Louis, the rib is star. In my opinion, I would eat these bare unless it's with the honey badger sauce. Other sauces are good, but I just think that, you know, like if this makes sense, it might seem like I'm dissing two of these sauces, but no, I'm complimenting the rib. I feel like the rib is so good that unless the sauce is outstanding, I just want to eat the rib. So honey badger or bust for me. So in this case, bust. Mm. Mm. We have finished the ribs, but it is time for some brisket and this is some nice juicy soft looking brisket let's give this a try why don't we first just on its own and look at that beautiful bark oh oh man oh. i mean when you get barbecue like this it makes me wonder why I even left St. Louis in the first place. I mean, getting barbecue of this caliber back on the East Coast is like impossible. If you know a place, please let me know. This brisket is just so fatty. Like, I mean, if you don't like super fatty food, then this might not be for you. Like if you suffer heavily from like, you know, acid reflux or GERD or something like that. But otherwise, this is just incredible. In the middle, you have some delicious kind of edible fat. And then on the outsides, you have some more lean pieces, so it's almost like you're eating like a brisket fat sandwich, almost. Like sandwich between lean pieces of brisket with delicious bark. And honestly, don't knock this lean section here. Like it's got great flavor. The flavor of the beef is incredible. Great barbecue really just brings out the best in the meat. So delicious and not to mention just an incredible bark, incredible spice rub. That bark kind of helps to, you know, change things up so that you're able to stuff this whole thing down your gullet. I mean, I can cut this almost like even without the knife. Like it just comes apart like that. So before we take another bite, somehow this honey badger sauce, like it just complements it perfectly. Like that sweetness, that slight kick, it kind of cuts down on the grease. It kind of cuts down on the oiliness and makes it more like digestible. So they got a good thing going with this honey badger sauce. I wonder if I could buy some of that to go. Wow. That bite was one of the top three bites I've had in like the past six months of my life. Oh man, delicious brisket, but in the nature of providing a good review, I'm sure this mac and cheese has gotten a little bit colder, a little bit coagulated, but let's eat some of this mac and cheese before it goes too far, before it's too far gone. So let's try some of the mac and cheese. Now, honestly, it might seem like I'm liking everything. Well, okay, I guess the sauces maybe I had some opinions on, but all of the main dishes, well, main meats and sides, I haven't found a single thing to complain about so far. I know this mac and cheese may not necessarily look like much. I mean, it might kind of just look like a pile of slop or something, you know, like something you would feed like a dog, but trust me, looks are not everything. I know like those Michelin star chefs say that you eat with your eyes first. So if something doesn't look good, they say it's not going to taste good. But honestly, in this case, if you really are that bothered by appearance, just close your eyes and eat it and you won't be bothered. Okay, so I guess I kind of wish that maybe it had a slightly more like crunchy outside, you know, like you get from like a baked mac and cheese. But guys, this is like, like as far as gooey mac and cheeses go, you know, like your Kraft's mac and cheese from a box. This is that like times a hundred, like not that terrible pre-packaged in a box Kraft macaroni and cheese that you serve like kids who don't know any better, you know? This is like, I don't know, like the least pretentious food you can find. Like it looks mushy and you know, not 
elevated like they didn't put like I don't know like a parsley garnish or something like that on it but it's just great food and all people of the world except for lactose intolerant people you have room in your stomach and heart for this mm. Mm. absolutely delicious like it's got like a nice buttery flavor like the cheese sauce just tastes great but last and you know maybe not least but let's try this uh you know jalapeno pudding why don't we so yeah just rip a piece off of this guy and it's looking pretty fluffy and kind of wet on the inside and Hmm, let's try another piece. Okay, this part's a little bit more charred. Maybe that will help. Hmm, you know, this is not really for me, but I don't really eat bread pudding often, so maybe it's just me, you know? Just like how there are some foods that, in Chinese, there's like stinky tofu, in Japan, there's, um, what's it called, uh, natto. It's possible this is just, you know, not really for me. For me, like, I feel like the inside of this is a little bit, like, wet and slimy, and I don't know, it does kind of just taste like bread that is, like, dunked in, like, liquid, like, soggy, wet bread, which nobody really likes. Unfortunately, the texture kind of just overrides everything, and I do taste some corn, but the jalapeno flavor doesn't really come through, to be honest. Like, to me, this dish is, I don't know, this is a little bit too wet, and I would wish it was a little bit more firm and less mushy and moist but again maybe that's just the style and maybe it's just not for me but guys these ribs this mac and cheese and this brisket especially with this honey badger sauce is just incredible like this brisket has like made my whole day my whole week pretty much honestly guys back in the day whenever we would rarely get barbecue in college we only ever ate at pappy's and i remember pappy's being incredible every time i ate there i felt like it was the highlight of my day slash week and it was like heaven on earth. You know, maybe it's nostalgia or maybe it really was that good, but I was expecting just how much I like Pappy's, I was expecting this to be like, you know, like a level lower, but this was just outstanding. I mean, oh, I mean, this has far exceeded my expectations. I can definitely see why this became like the biggest barbecue chain in St. Louis. But if Pappy's is unanimously regarded as the number one barbecue place, in the whole St. Louis area, and this is supposed to be like a tier below, I absolutely cannot wait to try them. So let's wash down all this oily food with some cool orange soda. Ugh. Life is good sometimes. Let's grab another piece of this brisket because I am not wasting any of this so as always I like to hear from you guys so if you're in the St. Louis area or if you've been to St. Louis what's your favorite St. Louis barbecue joint let me know in the comments because great minds eat alike oh and also let me know other barbecue places you would recommend anywhere in the U.S. and if you like my videos make sure you like and subscribe that way you stay up to date whenever I post another video time for some honey badger brisket so until next time I'll see you later